thanks for the nice introduction. Um, I'm Sarah Bürger, I'm a fashion designer. Um, actually, I'm not really designing fashion, I'm designing relationships, I would say. Um, yeah, and I'm actually like, I've spent a few hours here over the past few days and uh, dipped in and out, and I was amazed by all the input, but also it was very theoretical, and this is why today I think I'm going to get into the application. <laughs> like, you know, it's like you can think a lot about how to do it in theory, but then there is this materialism that we all um, connected with. Um, right, just uh, to get you into it, like I'm uh, going through the process that I'm actually always going through in design and also the process of um, my company um, or my vision, as Wolf says, and I think it is probably more of a vision than really a profitable business for now. Um, it's called House of All, um, and the mission is to make circular open source clothing accessible and affordable to all. And uh, I want to achieve this with Cosmo local production and small local ecosystems according to local needs. Whoever was here yesterday, it's kind of the principle of distributed design. Um, uh, maybe one fact, just uh, about what drives me. Uh, one percent of clothing is actually being recycled into a new piece of clothing and we still produce 80 billion pieces of clothing a year. So where does this all go? Just going back to this. <laughs> now, first of all, um, when I uh, realized this issue, which is probably 15 years ago, and uh, 10 years ago I decided to start the quest on changing the way this, or helping to change the way this industry kind of works. Um, I, I wondered what actually is fashion, what do clothes, and what is the, the role of it, what, what is the relationship with it. Like, nobody goes out naked, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of a really important thing, but we are so disconnected. And uh, the basis of all is actually quite a philo philosophical approach, I would say. Like, I uh, researched into quantum physics and into what is this world actually and who, what's our place in it. Because, I don't know, mostly we always understand ourselves as separate from the world. It's me and the world. It's like dualism. Um, but actually, like in quantum physics, by now actually probably proven or like very clear, like obvious, is that we are always interconnected, like the observer is the observed kind of thing, you know? And there is people that already knew that when, however long ago uh, in Ubuntu, you say, I am because we are. So whatever, you know, you experience is a resonance experience with something around you, like you are your outside, basically. And that's a very important, um, um, uh, what you finding, I think, because it can uh, help understand what fashion actually is and therefore help how we could maybe change the way we interact with clothing. It's a result of a resonance experience. <laughs> so um, the more the world changes around us, the more we want to change our styles. 80 billion pieces of clothing. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's a resonance experience. That's my personal finding or thesis. Um, but we can discuss, perhaps, but I, I think that's very, that's the foundation of my work, kind of. Oh, there's a, dub, there's a doubling. <laughs> Sorry. So um, after that, I thought, okay, how to, how to kind of get the, get this conflict sorted. Like, we want to change our clothes very fast, very often, um, but 
we, we want sustainability. <laughs> and sustainable clothes are very expensive, like a luxury. So all these points I considered and thought we need to build a new model that makes the old one obsolete. So there you go. I uh, figured perhaps it would be an idea to kind of use clothes as long as you need it, pass it on. We know it as a business term is rental model, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about commoning, um, which is kind of the act of pooling values, resources together and taking care of it. Like, of say in agriculture, we know it, for solid, solidary, solidary agriculture, I think it's called, um, where people pay as much as they can afford or a certain amount depending on the um, kind of community uh, and what they get is healthy food. And clothing is something we need. Um, so we could possibly apply the same model onto the clothing system. So take care as a community for whatever clothes we need, kind of. So the idea here, what you see is the distributed system. I get to it uh, a little bit later. Can you see that? That's very small, right? Yeah. Well, it basically shows like a local ecosystem con con uh, <laughs> consisting of, in the center, a database with clothing, uh, clothing files that can be downloaded and uh, produced, and uh, a community around it that feeds this database, and then the local artisans, fabricators, tailors, designers, knitters, pattern makers, um, and then as you go a little bit out, there is the dry cleaners and the repair services and the pools where people have got the pool of clothes they've decided to, to, have, to, be, to have produced and to take care of. So imagine uh, a neighborhood or a group of friends or a company that has got so and so many people and they have the pool and have decided beforehand what's in this pool and they organize it amongst them. So that, this is the vision for House of All. Now, if you use clothing um, and pass it on, what we would think is that there is some sort of damage happening in the you know, you get the clothes back and you gotta repair it and what happens most of the time in these rental systems um, where people, like the company owns all the clothes and you can rent it and then you can send it back or like H&M or wherever, um, you can send everything back. Uh, Zalando, you keep it for, I don't know, six weeks, wear it a few times and they oh, I don't want it anymore and send it back. <laughs> but what they actually do is they, look at it and then they bin it anyway because actually the clothing is not circular, it's not fit for purpose anymore. So, you know, it's like, it's a lie. So don't believe it, <laughs> it's not sustainable. Um, so what I really wanted to achieve is create responsibility. Now, how do you create responsibility and caretaking for a piece of clothing? What's also important is creating long longevity. Like, what is the material? What, what, what is, how is it made? Can it, can it be adapted? Or, or what does actually make it long living? Like, <clears throat> so these are the thoughts that I consider pre-use before I even start to touch a pencil. So there's one thing when you get a piece of clothing, um, you look at the tag. That's something I don't actually like. I don't like brands. That's why I call it House of All, because all are the designers. And hopefully, at some point in, during a transition phase that needs to be strategically applied, um, this brand tag will disappear and there'll just be maybe some little QR code or like a stitched sign inside to be able to track the piece of clothing and put it back into the pool. But, you know, 
we are far too, in my opinion, attached to brands. However, this is the first thing you do for now when you go shopping. So I created a tag that kind of creates a connection. Um, the, the attachment to a piece of clothing is very important, in my opinion. Like, first of all, you probably like the material. Um, then, I don't know, my um, thoughts on material are also that haptics create some sort of imminent consciousness. It's a bit, little bit like smell. You know, you, something touches you, you haven't got a filter, it just creates immediately a feeling. So it's very, very important what you put on your skin. Like, and I've got, as a designer, like a lot of responsibility for this and can think about that beforehand. Um, also, attachment, I started creating and now perhaps I need uh, two or three people that want to try this. <laughs> Like, uh, are you volunteering or should I pick you? <laughs> you just try on the clothes to get attached. <laughs> I think this one will probably fit you. Like, just put it on. Yeah, like a jacket. Um, then two more people, probably a size hmm, is tall. I think size 38 or M or something. Come on. See, you've already seen her being a little bit who? What's this? Like, this is my idea of creating attachment, involvement. What is it? How do I actually wear it? What can I do with it? Like, do I want it like this or do I want it like that? And the story behind it is also this piece has actually been configured by one of the community members. Um, because online, on our website, you can configure your jackets um, it also actually has changed uh, slightly by now. These pockets are totally removable and you can wear them as bags too and make your own and put them on any color, whatever. Um, that's one of the challenges that I faced is like finding a, a confectionery service, like a sewing factory kind of thing in Germany for a start, but then finding one that wants to change processes. and produce modular because um, this is what, uh, what these pieces of clothing are. Um, it's very important, I think, to be involved, as I just said, and therefore I created opportunities. Like, for example, these buttons, they are removable. That's got several reasons, but for a start, they, they look pretty, <laughs> but also you can make your own and change them. Uh, it's got a technical reason too, because if you use clothing a lot, then it needs washing a lot. If it's been washed a lot, the buttons, which are hard, um, damage the fiber over time. So best off, do it like back in the day and make them removable. They are laser cut um, at the local Fab Lab San Pauli, where I started my career as a maker <laughs> long, long ago. Um, and the files uh, can be downloaded and if somebody wants to learn how to make their own fights, they can come and learn it at the local textile lab that I'll be talking about in a minute. Yeah. So as you can see, like it's like a cufflink basically. It's very simple. Mm. So um, the other opportunity I've just shown is basically taking off the the top. So you've got two jackets in one. 
And the pockets, as I said, can be removed now and it can be configured. Um, this, by the way, is a waterproof material that you can shower in. <laughs> yeah, and it's um, by, by organic cotton and it's uh, from Switzerland, well, not the cotton, unfortunately, <laughs> but the, the material uh, and uh, it's, well, it's taken me probably two years to find a material that is organic and uh, that is like consciously made in a way and water repellent kind of thing. And those are the things going back to the bases uh, and materials are things that are really important to consider. Like if I want to make a circular garment, I skip this a little bit because I wanted to go into the um, application here and not bother you too much but with theory things. But the process of um, uh, material sourcing is very, very tedious if you want to kind of make a garment circular. And I've taken, as I said, two years because these uh, pieces of clothing are all, apart from the buttons which are removable, um, organic. So they can be recycled in the biological cycle um, and even the, even the yarn. So that's something that most people don't know, but the yarn in organic cotton t-shirts is polyester and therefore it's not circular anymore. And <laughs> it's greenwashing. So um, modul modularity also means interoperability. <laughs> uh, in order to save resources and uh, give a lot of opportunity to uh, increase the amount of uh, files on the database, um, I made them modular and uh, the, the sleeves of all these items fit on each of the bodices and the pockets and so on. So it's basically just uh, three, four different, I've got four different shapes of sleeves depending on uh, what you want, whether you want a bit sporty or short or tight fitting and you can mix and match all these things. This is a totally different material, oops, sorry. Um, this is wool and it's the same pattern as the other items that you see. Well, you can't do it afterwards. You can, you got to dismantle it, but you can beforehand decide. Yeah, and um, what well, well, probably, I don't know, is there fashion designers here? Um, you? Yeah. Um, the, the, the development of a pattern is uh, quite tricky. Like, it's, it's, first of all, you, you prototype quite a lot until you've got a matching, like a good pattern. Well, once you got that, you got to digitize it and uh, the software is propriety. So digitizing lots of patterns costs time and money. By now you can use 3D modeling and things like that and parametric um, design. So that's good, but usually you, know, you save capacities, resources if you do the modular approach. Does anybody want to stick it on? No? <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> right next, um, maybe you can even come up here, then everybody can have a proper look. <laughs> if you get now one more person, we can uh, uh, like take this apart. No? Maybe I put it on. <laughs> I actually prefer the, the long part. Do you prefer the long part? Which one do you prefer? I need a mirror. I need a mirror. There's also little details like you can actually roll up your sleeve and have got a button here that you can detach inside so you can 
shorten the sleeves and stuff like that. Now, the next thing is creating community. How do you do that? How do you actually get people involved in this design process and uh, make them you know, part of it to create the responsibility I was talking about earlier and the attachment to something? Because if, if it is, like I say, that you get attached to something if you're involved in the creation process, then best of get all involved in the creation process, but not all are designers, so how to do it? So we, um, we developed a game. That's the lowest threshold entry for somebody to kind of feel involved, and uh, if you go on the QR code, you can play it on your mobile phone. Um, I, I'm gonna put it back on the QR code, you don't need to do it now, perhaps. But yeah, the game is something that actually not only lets you decide upon which style you prefer and vote styles or, or items of clothing, however you want to call it, but also it geotags. So I can see and push into the production line or the shop those pieces of clothing that are preferred in Hamburg or in Munich. So the goal is, I don't know, you gathered it probably, that we get the resonance experiences of our surroundings in the future and the, the clothing, the ecosystems can get their personal favorites into their system kind of thing. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it's about creating relationships. Relationships between the community members, relationships between you and the piece of clothing, and uh, relationships in, within the ecosystem and all the stakeholders or people that kind of need to be part of it to make this happen. Well, that was it about House of All, and then the, um, the, the challenge in order to create this ecosystem and these relationships is there is no infrastructure for this in, in Germany <laughs> because we decided to globalize and enslave people on the other side of the planet because uh, actually sewing, I think, is one of the few um, skills that cannot be um, automated, like robotized kind of thing because it needs touch and haptics and there is no robots that are able to sew a silk garment like you would see on the defile or something. Mm, there is robots that can sew straight and there's robots that can knit, but there's no robots that can make these pieces. So in order to solve this issue, I am part of the Fab City Association and a um, cooperation partner um, with them to uh, research into how we can build the first ecosystem in Hamburg. And l just last week I've um, given a preview at a textile lab that we started, or me as House of All founder, um, with a team now together um, leading it and, or betreiben, whatever you call it, running, running it. <laughs> and um, yeah, there we do some research. So I just quickly give you an overview of what actually is happening there. It's Colonnaden 72, come over. Our open days are uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, 10 to 6. Um, the lab is a room for community prototyping. So it's called Open Lab Circular Textiles. Um, and um, we offer education and space for research um, and residencies. Now, if there's no fashion designers around, you won't know what these Ah, but there's a lot of equipment that is, um, I'm getting warm, uh, that is digitally driven, but also um, analog um, items. Also, there be biolab facilities. Now, the research is very important because this is where we want to get to. We want to be able to implement a local ecosystem and 
and make use of the local resources. So first we uh, go into the pre-use and figure out, or like, um, is, mm, well, take stock of local production for a start. Who is here? What are they producing? What can they produce? Can we standardize the processes? And can we somehow digitally organize this whole thing to be distributed within Hamburg? We will look into local materials. There is not much. There's hemp and wool, <laughs> and perhaps um, like mycelium. Um, then we get into tracking, into repair infrastructure, and into recycling. Uh, if you're interested, uh, follow us, um, or I'll be here anyway. Um, yeah, and that's from me. <laughs>